One easy red is blocked by another. A potential easy red could be blocked by the pink. Higgins has taken a couple of looks, can't quite make up his mind. This must be borderline. Does have one pot, the red closest to the pink spot, but that requires using the rest. Not just the rest, the extended rest. Hawkeye showing us that he can't quite make the potting angle on the red that he wanted to be on. Now this isn't just about the difficulty of the pot, it's also about weaving the cue ball back up the table out of the reds. Seventeen. Well he's made unwanted contact but he might be on the pink here unintentionally. can't quite squeeze through so taking on a, a very big blue just superb and now the ready originally wanted the pot to the left of the pink will go 22 what a pot that was What of Judd Trump? Well, he's still there in his chair, as he's been for most of the session. Yesterday in the semi-finals, Higgins came back from 3-2 down against Sean Murphy to prevail 6-3 with a four-frame burst of brilliance. Repeating that here, and then some today. Thirty-six. Thirty-seven. A familiar pattern being repeated. Trump so far Forty. in this evening's session hasn't scored 25 points in any frame. 44. In two of the completed four frames, he hasn't potted a ball, and he's not potted one in this frame either yet. Higgins totally dominant. 50. Fifty-one. And we must also remember that John Higgins this season is playing with a new cue. 57. He's become accustomed to it very quickly. 58. So the pink and one more red. And they are going to be on level terms. 64. What a comeback.
numerically impressive to come back from 7-2 down to 7-all with a player of Trump's capabilities. 7-2-1. But to do it in the manner that Higgins has, even more impressive. John Higgins at seven to one and the thing. Again, Trump remains in his chair. Thank you, frame fifteen. John Higgins to break. Fluency, excellence, a maximum break. A couple of frames early on, decided on the colours. And now it couldn't be closer. All of the ingredients for a classic. One of the best finals you're ever likely to see. Now will that ignite Trump? If it's going to, has to pull off another unlikely pot. Trump won. It was too much to ask. Did the right thing. Tried to keep his opponent quiet. I said the word trying. I just had a feeling you might knock that one in. This is, even by John Higgins' standards, something special. Judd Trump has lost five frames. He's been blitzed in all five, and yet he's not playing bad snooker. Higgins hardly making a mistake until then. Thought for a moment he might be snookered on all reds. That's not the case, he does have a, an easy safety shot, but hitting the blue like that will annoy him. Now then, the red over the pocket is blocked by the blue. But can Trump make a plant? Well, maybe he can get through directly. Applying side here. Oh, yes. With side, it falls in. Yes. Flicking in. Now the thing Trump needs more than anything else is scoring table time. Seem to get going. Judd Trump eight. 
the little nudges, the little flicks here and there positional subtleties that were with him in the first session they're against him so far in this one That was well played. Easy to collide with the Reds, but the application of check side removed that possibility. Isn't this a captivating final? Two of the best players in the game playing some lovely snooker. Inseparable now. And there's a Trump special. He's second of the frame. <coughs> what occurs over the next three, four or five frames and will determine whether in ranking event finals Jed Trump has a 50% success rate or a 75% success rate. Will it be two out of four or three out of four? I thought he was a little unlucky there, played that shot quite nicely but caught the green just a, a smidgen too thin. Otherwise Higgins would have been in a snooker. Similar shot that to one he played a little earlier with lots of check side. We've seen so much fluency, so many high breaks in this match. Law of averages suggests we're going to have a, a period of scrappy snooker at some point. And the way the Reds have gone here, maybe this is going to be that particular frame. I mean, it's not a, an awful table by any means. But three Reds clustered around the pink, three more close to the right hand side cushion Trump special. Look at the cue power there. I don't think anyone in the game plays that shot better. The straight red when he cues it in and screws back into bulk. Either for a shot to nothing or in that case knowing that 
he could play a safety shot and still go for the pot and land on the green. Four. Five. Halfway house positionally. Mind you, the blue to the yellow bag shouldn't be any problem. Although at this stage of a final, queuing a little awkwardly. Hmm. Yes. Judge Trump five. Now, if my memory serves me correct, we saw something similar to this, you know, in the very first Shanghai Masters final in 2007. It was an all-Welsh affair. Ryan Day led, I believe, 6-3 going into the final session. But his good mate and fellow countryman, Dominic Dale, then won all of the frames in the second session to prevail 10-6. 24. 25. And with every frame that Higgins wins here, Trump's task becomes a little more difficult. 25. Very good shot. Very good. You have to rely on luck. It doesn't matter how good you are when you're playing that kind of shot. But he took the cue ball into the Reds at force. And now a pressure shot coming up on the black as well. A fact recognised by Higgins, hence the hesitation. Party. I think Higgins was a little unlucky there in the sense that he had a, a springy bounce off the second cushion. The break is 48, the lead is 37, so red and high value colour will leave Trump requiring snookers. It's not there though. It's not there. John Higgins, 48.
Higgins turns away in disgust after missing that. One. It's not going to be easy. Pinks off its spot. Brown and blue close to the ball cushion. The two remaining reds close to the side cushion. But if Trump could somehow clear up here, his morale would be renewed. Eight. Nine. The weight of the cue ball just about right. Not even straight on the red. Has a a friendly angle. Needs the cue ball to halt, and it has done. The hard work here, getting off green onto brown in such a way that he can hold for the blue. Trump's heart must have been in his mouth there. He's not as straight as he wanted to be. The shot requires delicacy and nerve in abundance. If he bothers to take it on, there's no point if he feels he can't hold on the blue. good part but now the the blue surely won't be attempted What a cracking frame this has been. Clever shot from Higgins. From here, the Scot needs blue and pink. Trump needs the three remaining colours. Not quite even money, but you would think whoever pots the blue more than likely will win the frame.
that wasn't a good safety for two reasons. One, he's left the blue on, although it's not an easy pot under these circumstances. And also, he's knocked the black a little bit safer. And he's the one who needs the black, not Higgins. Talk about cruel. Oh, no. Had Higgins, in fairness, potted the blue into the middle of the pocket, the cue ball wouldn't have gone in off, but even so, that was horrible, wasn't it? John Higgins did not deserve that. <coughs> so level board. Trump needing blue and pink. Well, having missed the blue, Trump riding his luck, leaving it safe. This is a frame that could decide the whole thing. Oh, and that's a terrible shot from Trump. One of the worst safeties you're ever likely to see. Called that wholly incorrect. I'm sure John Higgins can't quite believe his luck. Five. So the pink for John Higgins to take the lead in the match for the first time. It's one of those frames, folks. It really is. Now, I won't be surprised at all to see Higgins if he tries the, the thin snick here to miss it completely. Well, he caught it much too thick. Much too thick. Six. All on the black. Wow, what a frame this has been. And I think, you know, the two players, if Higgins were to lose it, I think it would hurt him more. Remember, he missed the red across the top cushion, which was effectively frame ball. He missed the pink off its spot from mid-range. He potted the blue, went in off. If Trump can go back in front at 8-7, Higgins entitled to be deflated. The double was in his mind. 
The major thing for him though was to hold the cue ball down there and he didn't really do it. Well early in this frame, Trump knocked in three reds from distance beautifully. What about this? Nowhere near. Nowhere near. Very good from Higgins. And in terms of containment, that was a, a very good reply from Trump. much riding on this frame. Psychologically, it's immense. And the doubler. And we must also mention the ranking points and financial implications. 7,000 world ranking points. For Judd Trump, they would be like gold dust in his attempt to become the world number one for the first time. Prize money wise, well, there's a big difference. £75,000 to the winner, that's around US dollars £30,000, just less than US$60,000 to the runner up. And this could turn into a very lucrative tournament indeed for John Higgins. He's most lucrative outside of British shores. Because if he were to win the title, he'd go home with £87,000 because he's got a £10,000 bonus for his 147 in frame six. And also the £2,000 for the tournament's highest break. First blow in frame 16 struck by Trump. Could not have judged that snooker any better. Now if the Reds are all tightly bunched here, Higgins wouldn't be too concerned. But already they're opened. Judd Trump six. And now Michaela Tab, the referee, has a little bit of replacement work to do. Obviously wanted to hit the Reds first time, but he was erring on the side of missing them towards the pink. Rather go narrow and give six points away than go wide and possibly leave a red.
just took a quick look at that hoping to possibly knock in the plant but the main thrust of the shot was safety and it's a good one And from where he was, that's not too bad either. OK, it's short of the ball line, but that wasn't an easy situation for Higgins. Caught it just a hair thick. A little thinner and that would have been ideal. But at the very least, he's put distance between the cue ball and the Reds. Trump starting to look vulnerable. Understandable, given the onslaught he's been subjected to. John Higgins won. Doesn't matter how fluent, how heavy scoring players have been in finals, when they get to this stage, quite often the exchanges become a lot more tense and a lot more disjointed. Deserved applause for that. It looked a, a simple, straightforward shot. But Trump played that with a drag effect, hitting the cue ball low to be able to hit the ball a little harder than otherwise. Had to judge the speed and the contact with the blue perfectly, and he did. Higgins, make no mistake, in trouble here. Red hits, but red left. He was so good in the first session, Trump, beginning to look a little ragged. One. 
Skin. Higgins one. No need for that. Uncharacteristic. Loose. Let me tell you, any time you pot a ball like that across the ball cushion, at that pace, it's a good shot. Again, positional frustration for Trump. Judd Trump, three. So far, the first real fragmentary frame of the match. Up to this point, the lowest high break in any frame has been 48. Get evidence of just how well Trump plays that shot. Q power in abundance. Now, surely he must be on something here. Must be. Five. It's been the same all session for Trump, just can't seem to, to get any kind of rhythm going. That white ball just not obeying his commands as it was early on. Just to give you an extent of Trump's domination, in the first four frames today he scored 436 points to Higgins' 28. But it's the mark of a champion not to rack up the points when everything's going well, but to be able to stem a tide.
And now, Trump's prospects in frame number 16 are very much upgraded. Okay, the blacks under the top cushion out of commission. The blue's awkward as well. Nineteen. But at least the pink's there and available. In terms of high value colours, the pink is the only game in town. As soon as the white made contact with the red there, Trump was up, asking Michaela Tab to clean it, detected a kick. We've had so few of them during this tournament, in comparison to others, it would be a shame if a kick was influential in deciding a frame, or indeed the match, late on. 33. 34. The message here, Jet Trump is not lying down. Forty one. Fifty nine in front, fifty nine on the table. Forty seven. So this red will leave Higgins requiring snookers. And it appears as though the Scots six frame winning streak is over. Under the circumstances, one of the best breaks 54. Trump could have wished for. You saw there, as I'm sure you've seen throughout the course of the match, Trump does have the ability to play certain shots right-handed. Not quite as ambidextrously skilled as Ronnie O'Sullivan, but it's a big asset. And if you could make a century break from here, it would be a remarkable effort. Seventy eight. Eighty. Go on, get in. 
Extraordinary. Extraordinary shot. It's seven. Three figure break from his starting position in this frame would be, for me, better than the 147 from Higgins in frame six. Have you ever seen anything like it? applause and rightly so you will not see a more unlike thank you frame 17 john higgins to break higgins breaks off in frame 17 now thinking well has trump recharged his batteries if he has it won't do him any good from there While he's pondering this, I can tell you that was Trump's third century break of the match. And he's 19th century break in professional competition this season. Now bear in mind we're only in late September. The season runs right through until early next May. And we've got so many tournaments to come. Mark Selby's 55 centuries in a single season, the record, which was established last season might well be under threat. Trump's concern was justified there. He has left a couple of reds, one to the left middle, one to the right. One. Pressure shot on black, coming up. Seventeen. Twenty-eight. 
24. I think you get into a situation now where someone is going to leave this match. Thinking, well, I played really well and I lost. 25. There can't have been many finals where someone has played so well, either Tremp or Higgins, and been on the receiving end of a defeat. But that's a fate that awaits one of them. Steady respotting skills of Michaela Tab required here. Thank you. Thirty-one. Thirty-two. All about the angle on the colour. Mm. Too far on the blue. Not far enough on the yellow in terms of going into the bunch. 34. Thirty-five. Now, though, the angle is there on the black. In fact, appreciated by this knowledgeable crowd. A good split here, and nine-eight Higgins could be beckoning. Now, for a while there, I thought, good split, 42. but no easy red left. But the last few rolls of the red that went over the ball pocket have made John Higgins' life a whole lot easier. <coughs> 43. When people ask me, what's the best match you've ever commentated on? I always tell them, 46. Thailand Open Final in Bangkok many years back, nearly 20 years ago now, when James Wattener made three total clearances, built a, a massive lead over Steve Davis and just about held on. That judgment based on the significance of the match, where it was, the atmosphere, the quality of the snooker, all of that kind of stuff. I'll tell you what though, this might be a new candidate for the best match I've ever commentated on. It's certainly close, it's right up there. Fifty-nine. The blue and one more red needed.
64. Using the extension and the extended rest, this is not the kind of pot you want to knock in to win a frame. I'd be surprised if Higgins were to miss it, but it's not beyond the bounds of possibility. Higgins, I've seen it all too often, that kind of shot when it's frame ball. So 64 behind Trump is, with 67 on the table. Does have a, a wee bit of wiggle room, doesn't have to pot blacks. One. A wave of relief has just washed over John Higgins. Seven. Trump needs to cut his losses here, Does, doesn't need to go for anything outrageous. Just play a good safety. Wait. doesn't normally take this length of time over a shot but given the situation entirely understandable Judd Trump seven six out of ten for that really Good weight on the cue ball, but shouldn't be too taxing a return to Balk for Higgins. That was a better effort from Trump. Thank you. Higgins just moving away from the table in a gentlemanly fashion, allowing the referee to see what he can see of the Reds.
now then. It's very important if Higgins can get through to what to uh, chip off the red close to the black. He'll want to do that. He won't want to remove the red on the side cushion. That's a little bit of an insurance policy against a potential trump clearance. But he might be forced to go off it because he can't see the red he wanted to make contact with. He was so intent on a very thin contact there to try and leave the red on the cushion. It compromised the effectiveness of his safety shot. A second chance to clear. Forced to Trump. One. So he's spotting the pink here, means he's going to be 50 behind with 51 on. No more colours leeway. And that's worked out a treat. Seven. Trump has to pot three reds, three blacks and all the colours to pinch the frame by a single point. Eight. I don't know what the hesitation was for there. He didn't feather the white. Applause, but Trump knows that's a mistake. Bear in mind, he has to pot the black off the last red to be able to win the frame outright. If he pots the red here and knocks in the pink afterwards, then all the colours, he can force a respotted black. But the blue, that won't be sufficient at all. Black undercut. 24. Two snookers now needed by Trump. Higgins on the verge of a 9-8 lead. Five. Is that the killer blow? There have been far too many twists and turns in this match for me to say that with any great certainty. But for the second time in the contest, John Higgins goes in front. He was 8-7 ahead. It's now 9-8. One more... Thank you, frame 18. That's the object of their desires. And a cheque for £75,000.
Well, last year's Shanghai Masters final was full of drama, and that went down to the wire. Selby beating Williams 10-9. Are we in for something the same here? Mm. That doesn't help. John Higgins, four. So well cued. I'll tell you what, the way he's playing with this cue, full of confidence, it's ominous for the rest of them for the rest of the season. And how quickly things can change. Only 10 days ago, I was up at the Sands Centre in Carlisle commentating on the, the Premier League there on Sky Sports. John Higgins beat Mark Allen 4-2, but he was entirely unconvincing. John Higgins 7. Well, how about that? All pots are missable. But he was trying so hard to hold the cue ball for the blue. He didn't actually miss the red. He just didn't reach. <coughs> the crowd gasping in disbelief, but I don't think that red would go. Had Trump been able to pop that, the cue ball wouldn't have been there. That's the clue. Obviously that pot was thin as well because Higgins missed completely. The joviality of the crowd and their laughs and cheers, smiles, all that kind of stuff in total contrast to the the faces of the two players, the game faces of the two players. For them this is deadly serious stuff. The intention there, as you might have guessed, was to screw into the red closest to the black. Free the red, and more importantly, free the highest value colour on the table. Trump did not succeed. Seven. And positionally, he's not succeeded there either. Judge Trump seven.
Another cracking pot from Trump. Ironically, he's probably knocked in more wonderful pots in the second session when he's been outplayed than he did in the opening session when he was dominant. That was all about fluency and scoring. Well, the intention there was to come off the side cushion into the bunch of reds, and he just dug into the cue ball a little too low. So again, frustration, again, end of break. Judge Trump, three. Foul. Foul. Thank you. John Higgins, four. Very sporting from Judd Trump owning up to a foul shot there. Q just grazed a red as he played the shot. It's been a tournament notable for that. The best example came in the deciding frame of the quarterfinal between Joe Perry and Mark Williams. Perry had just made 131 break to get back to 4-4. He potted the opening red in the decider, was nicely on the black, but as the cue ball came back, it grazed his cue. No one else saw it, certainly the referee didn't. Williams didn't. You couldn't really tell off replays. But Perry owned up and Williams eventually won the frame with a 75 break. One. He didn't benefit from honesty in that instance. Maybe though. Here, Trump might. Just can't get anything going, can he? Seven. It's all bits and pieces. That could be a colossal mistake. Any time you play a safety shot and the cue ball finds its way into the jaws of a top pocket, you know it could be costly. One. Higgins edges ahead in frame 18. Not to his benefit that the blacks tied up, but he knew it was going to be when he potted it. Nine. At least the pink is there. John Higgins, 15. So much of his concentration was on freeing the black. He forgot the pot.
for most of the match these two made the sport of snooker look preposterously easy but when the pressure cranks up to top level no shots easy well Higgins would have had a shot on the black there had it not been for the last few revolutions of the last ball moving on the table what a cracking pot as was that masterful queuing six <coughs> 15 ahead Trump fearing the worst seven now the pink does go for Higgins but this is a horrible shot to play the blue is not viable can't get through to that the red still blocking the the black here so another pressure shot coming up <laughs> to a certain extent there the balls conspired against Higgins twice he didn't have the the best of luck positionally renewed hope for Trump Now try to nestle the cue ball in behind the black there. I don't know whether he succeeded. I think not. Yes, the red on the left hand side of the table can be struck directly. well thought out because it's always so difficult to cue with the the wide ball deep in the jaws excellent from Trump this excellent Fast approaching 10.30 at night here in Shanghai, but no one's going home. We've had some wonderful finals in China over the years. But I can't think of anything to top this. Higgins was in deep there wasn't he even his shrewd tactical mind couldn't work out anything that was going to be a, a fail safe
one. Six. Seven. If Trump does capture this title, he will have done it the hard way. Everyone he's come up against here in Shanghai. A ranking event winner. Started out with Barry Hawkins. Snooker's most recent ranking event winner at the Australian Golf Fields Open. Then he beat Mark Allen, reigning World Open champion. Graham Dot was put to the sword. In the quarterfinals, Dot, the 2006 world champion and former China Open champion as well. On to the semi finals. Trump defeated Mark Williams, an 18 time ranking event winner, two of which were world crowns. And now he's up against one of the the greats of all time. A little short of pace there off the top cushion. Nineteen. Twenty-four. Twenty-five. The kiss wasn't thick enough on the red. He can't see the black. He can pop the blue. But he can't get position on the red because it won't go to the right hand middle, left middle, or the top left hand pocket as we're looking at the table. Cut your losses here, young man. The safety makes all the sense in the world. But he's such a naturally attacking player. Can he resist? Cream. He could resist and he's played the shot really well. Now this is a tough escape for Higgins. Massey effect around the yellow. Don't tell me the red's in. Oh dear me. The balance of power in the frame has just shifted again. Because now, Higgins will attempt to nestle the cue ball in behind the black. For a snooker of his own. John Higgins won. Didn't play that well. Didn't play it well at all. <laughs> That's the fluke. Higgins will settle for that. 
Useful eight point lead here though for Trump, especially where the pink and black are. As it stands, Higgins needs yellow to pink. Trump only needs yellow to blue. Well, the yellow has travelled far enough past the middle pocket that Higgins cannot pot it, but he can lay the snooker. And, what's more, remove the green at the same time. The ultimate two-in-one shot. And bear in mind what I've just said, Higgins only needs from here yellow to pink so he can pop the four open colours if he gets the chance and maybe who knows double the pink in he's been doing that all the way through the tournament pulling off doubles at just the right time Trump will be mightily relieved to see where the yellow has gone, although after this, snookering behind the pink is a possibility. He's not playing the snooker behind the pink, he feels that there's too much distance for the cue ball to travel up to the pink. Conkard double! A cock tat double. That's what they call it. John. Trump disbelieving, but down Higgins now, knows his angles. <laughs> and the scenario I was talking about a while ago. Brown and blue, followed by a double on the pink to win. Now looks like it might be reality. Nine. He's forsaken the double. He's trying to get this off the cushion. Blue to middle. Cue ball off ball cushion to remove the pink. Well, that's what I thought he was going to do from there. What a strange shot. Not so much the blue, but the brown. Anyway, Higgins one point ahead.
the Higgins one point lead makes no difference really both players need blue and pink Trem one ball away from 9-9. Nine nine. Higgins two balls away from victory. And that isn't good. Got Trump five. Where's the cue ball? End of frame. End of frame, surely. He'll pop the pink to the to the yellow pocket if he can't. Settle down, please. Couldn't quite get it where he wanted to. Nine nine to the wire. What a match. This is a fitting conclusion. Let me tell you our next snooker action here on Live World Snooker.tv is in 12 days' time. It's the next players to a championship event from Gardinia in Poland. Neil Folds and Clive Everton will be guiding you through that one. John Higgins to break. First, though, I've got a little bit of unfinished business to attend to. This frame. Put cameras away, please. Mikhail the Tab imploring the crowd to put their cameras away. I think they've been better behaved this evening than they have for a number of sessions in terms of taking photographs with their, their mobiles. Given the way this has gone, one player is going to feel elated. The other, totally crestfallen. Although I will say, even though Higgins would be bitterly disappointed if he lost, I think Trump would feel it even more, considering he led 7-2. The applause from the crowd there, well merited. That was a good safety, wasn't it? Deep into bulk. <laughs> it might have been a good safety, but that was a cracking pot. A couple of kisses. Cue ball remains in the middle of the table on a choice of brown or green.
Well, in each of the previous two rounds, Judd Trump has repelled late challenges from former world champions. He led Graham Dot 4-1 in the quarterfinals, was pegged back to 4-4, made a century break in the decider. He led Mark Williams 5-1 and by 53 points to nil in frame seven. Lost that frame, lost the next two. But Williams didn't pot a ball in frame ten. As Trump held his nerve once more. Can he do something similar here? There's a gap for the red and more importantly there's a gap for the pink. Thirteen. Almost as soon as he hit that, Trump knew in his heart of hearts he'd overscrewed. Take your seat, please. The last thing we want now is the crowd to influence what might happen. Someone moving behind the green pocket. And Trump is toying with the idea of trying to, to ram the red into it. Well, it was an idea, now it's actuality. Twenty-four. Late in the previous frame, the camera panned to Judd Trump while John Higgins was at the table seemingly with a chance to clear up Trump feared the worst at that moment I can tell you you could tell it from his expression it was written all over his face now Higgins must be not quite as worried but getting there Thirty-one. Thirty-two. 
I can all say. What a match this has been. Thirty-five. Had to get a kiss there and somehow missed the black completely on the way towards the top cushion and off it as well. Just too close to contemplate cutting it in. How do you find that gap? <laughs> Trump needs to accept the fact that the break's over. Clear his mind. Think about placing in the bulk area of the table Higgins in maximum trouble ben. Judd Trump 36 not decisive but a, a useful platform given the tension of any deciding frame in any round of any professional event, let alone a major final. You know the old phrase when an immovable object meets an irresistible force, something's got to give. I think it applies to this match. Eight. What a pop that was from Higgins. Nine. Into the bunch there, knew full well he was going to be on something. Fifteen. Purposely played through the gap. How he wishes the awkward red on the right hand side cushion wasn't there. Because now everything else is sitting pretty. Twenty two. Twenty three, twenty three, thirty. Higgins just in front now. 
And the angle here Very might be on this red to maybe dislodge the awkward one. If he decides on the shot and it works out correctly, big rewards. But of course, playing it like that, there's always the risk of leaving the cue ball tight on the side cushion. He'll wait. What about the angle now? Looks all right, doesn't it? Forty five. The one thing he doesn't want to do is take his eye off the pot. Whoa. Red needs to stop. Well, its position has been improved, but only marginally. Does the red go past the green? Forty-eight. One thing that might influence Higgins here is the fact that at the very least, Trump now needs the awkward blue. Oh, it floated in. What a break this has been. 16 in front. Higgins needs two more pots. Green and brown to leave Trump requiring a snooker. And if the brown goes in here, forget the 147. This has been his best break of the match. One of the best breaks of his career. Sometimes your highest break in a match isn't the best or certainly the most important. The 147 was lucrative. This has been absolutely timely. If he pots the brown, he'll be 25 in front with 18 on. Two snookers will be required. Well, I'm really sorry if you encountered any break of pictures there, just at the vital moment. The brown was deposited. And Trump is now staring at defeat. Of course he will carry John on. Higgins, 61. But what a break from John Higgins. 61 under the cosh. Quietly, please. Thank you. Won't be taking anything for granted, Higgins. He has lost a ranking event final after his opponent required a snooker. British Open years back against Nigel Bond. 
Higgins was 69 in front of the decided with 67 on. Bond got the snooker, one on the black. The Trump's not going to win this one. He concedes. John Higgins 